spooky a little bit. Welcome to Friends Talk <laughs> Live, presented by Acura. I mean, this isn't a scary time. This is an exciting time. It's March Madness. A lot to be excited about. That's Dallin Cuff. That's King McClure. This is Sam Ravitch, and I am Christine Williamson. We have a lot to talk about. We're going to talk about the bracket, obviously, give you some tips about going through the bracket. Um, but first, guys, I mean, looking at the bracket, now that we know kind of how things have shaken out. What are your takeaways as we go into March Madness, Sam? This is, this is all about embracing the madness, right? I mean, this is the best time of year, and the question is, is there another UMBC in this field? Is there another St. Peter's? I would be more inclined to say yes, considering all of the parody that we have seen. So we should all be embracing the madness of March. That's what I'm going to go with. Okay. Uh, to piggyback off what you said, I mean, I think there's a lot of matchups in this tournament that are favorable for the lower seeds. Mm -hmm. I mean, we look at teams like Drake. We look at teams like Colgate, Grand Canyon. I mean, these are teams that are old. They're veterans. They know how to win. They've been in these moments, and they're ready to play. And we've said all year that this, this field is the most wide open we've ever seen. Yeah. And that holds true. And I think that reiterates or supports what you just said there. I think the concern, though, is there are a lot of teams that have key teams that have big injuries right now. Marcus yeah. Sasser is an All-American for Houston. He, he Maybe he could have gone today, but we saw what he looked like when he didn't go. Memphis blew them out. Uh, Kansas, Kevin McCuller was hurt during the tournament. How yeah. is he, his health? Bill Self, obviously just out of the hospital. Hall of Fame coach. What's his health like? Uh, UCLA already has injuries that are going to miss key guys. Jalen Clark we know is out. And you can go on some other key teams. So those are three teams that I think could have made it to a Final Four that now have injury issues. And other teams like Miami and North Shadow Mirror, there's, there's just up and down the roster yeah. of, key, of key guys that we just don't know. So remember that when you're filling out your bracket. Yeah. I would wait till Wednesday. I would, just, I, would just, I would just chill and just wait till Wednesday. I'm, or maybe Thursday morning. I'm so Second annoyed time. because when they asked us this question, because we had this already like kind of planned out before we knew who the bracket was and like how things were going to shake out in conference tournaments. And I was like, well, yeah, Kansas is just like running the table still. And then they lost to Texas. <laughs> so right by now, 20. for me, I yeah, by 20, it was They like lost in the final of the okay, best conference. by 20 points. Without their head coach. With, and without one of their starters, and they're not deep. So listen. Girl, don't jump listen, up the train. Listen, look at mine. Parody, yes, but also Kansas. Because I feel like we talked mark. about how uh, there's been parody throughout the entire college basketball season, right? But then Kansas, obviously, defending champions could still make a run yeah. for the tournament. So I'm like, okay, yes, there is parody across the entire field. But, like, Kansas still in there. Okay, so the bracket is out, and that means that it's time to start filling out your bracket. Download the Tournament Challenge app to fill out your men's bracket right now, all right, so I mentioned that we're going to give you some tips to fill out your bracket. Uh, a few tips and then also some questions regarding those tips, starting with number one. Tip number one, advance the top seeds in the opening round. So it's probably safe to pick the number one, two, three seeds to advance in their opening round matchup. One seeds have only lost once in the first round before 2012. Two seeds went 10 years without losing in the first round, but since then, six have lost. Mm -hmm. And three seeds are 35 and five. So are there any issues, you guys, with going chalk here in the first round when you look at the top seeds? Um, well, one, one seeds, no. Two seeds, I have a little concern. I like Colgate a lot, and it's a terrible matchup with Texas. Yeah. UNC Asheville, though, with UCLA. Again, if UCLA's hurt, Drew Pember for UNC Asheville is a legit player, player of the year in that league. Uh, they can shoot it. They've got, they're very well coached. They can change up defenses on you. So I would say that 15-2 that matchup is a little concerning. Vermont is great, but has been a great program. But I think Marquette is just on a different level. I mean, it might surprise you, but the UC Santa Barbara team yeah. against my Baylor Bears. Ooh. The way the Baylor Bears have been playing oh, defense. Did you Whoa! <laughs> I didn't know that was coming. I'm sorry. Why that again? I'm the, sorry. The, the <laughs> only one I'm concerned about okay. is that, that, that matchup. I mean, when you look at the Baylor Bears and the way that they have defended all year, uh -huh. if they have one bad game where their shot is not falling, where they're not hitting threes from deep, they could be out early. Yeah. So that UC Santa Barbara Baylor matchup is a matchup to, to, to watch. But I think my Baylor Bears are will you gonna, be able are you, to prevail. Are, are you going to pick it? I'm not picking it. I'm not picking it. I'm really not saying you even said it. <laughs> I, I'm going to say it, but I'm not going to pick it. Right. Okay, okay, but if okay, their okay. shot is not falling, they could be in danger. Mm. Yeah. I, I think it's just, you know, the stats bear it out. It's unlikely that one seeds, two seeds, and three seeds lose in the first round. Having said that, though, uh, you look at teams like Colgate, and we've talked about them. We'll got to talk about them a little bit more. Look at teams like UNC Asheville, two of the better three-point shooting teams in the entire country. And, and, and another thing that we're, we're going to mention a lot, th there are older teams now, the teams that, like Colgate, brought back players mm -hmm. to continue and run it back, and, and I think that's going to provide some problems to some of the higher seeds. Colgate's, in the last two tournaments, Colgate has given a run, to their yeah. run for their money for their teams yeah. they've played. 
That said, they're getting like 15 points. So those of you who like to just like to gamble, <laughs> I'd like a heck of a bet right now. Give me those 15 points in the Red Raiders and Matt Langles group. <laughs> okay, we'll talk about betting a little bit later in the show too. All right, we have another tip for you guys. Target the 12 versus 5 matchup as an upset pick. It's everybody's favorite upset pick, the most popular one to pick for good reason. There's only been five tournaments without one. Three 12s advanced in 2019 as well as both in 2013 and 2014. So which 12-5 matchup are you guys going with for an upset pick? Uh, I'm definitely picking VCU over St. Mary's. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I like VCU's team. I've covered them throughout the course of the year in the Atlantic 10. Ace Baldwin is a point guard that that is elite, and he loves to give it to other point guards. Like, they had Yuri Collins in St. Louis. He told me, like, I can't wait for this matchup. Like, he was hyped, and he owned, or Yuri had 37 in that game mm. on their building, and they won. Same thing with Malachi Smith at Dayton. Aiden Mahaney is a very good point guard for St. Mary's. As a freshman, that's gotten a lot of love nationally. I can imagine Ace already sitting in his room like, I'm going to eat this guy for breakfast. So I, I'm, I think VCU wins that game. I love Oral Roberts. I hate that they're matched up with Duke. I think Duke's playing their best ball right now, and that's just unfortunate. I don't think they're going to be able to beat them. Charleston's a trendy pick. Not going to pick them. Think San Diego State will grind it down. Miami and Duke is a big one because Miami's got injury issues. And I love a Drake's army. And I love Drake's team. So if North Shadow Mirror, like I said, the injuries, he can't go, Drake may be my pick. Listen, I'm going with two. The first one is the Oral Roberts and Duke matchup. Yes, Duke is tall. They're playing some of the best basketball in the country. But Oral Roberts is a really good team. Mm -hmm. Undefeated in conference. Won the conference championship by 30. They spread the floor. They returned six out of the eight players who went to the Sweet 16 two seasons ago. They have a Naismith player of the year in Max Aismith, mm -hmm. one of the best point guards in the country that mm -hmm. nobody really talks about. I think they can cause problems. I mean, they can match up with them down low in the interior with Connor Vano with a transfer from Arkansas. 7-5 can match yeah. up with Philip Filipowski. Yeah. So I think they can spread the floor and make Duke really guard in the perimeter, make Derek Lively, make Filipowski guard in the perimeter. I think they can pull that one off. And Christine, you're not going to like this, I but know. Miami I was waiting for my, my, Miami is, is in serious trouble because this Drake team, yep. they have a legitimate pro in Tucker DeVries. Mm -hmm. The way they shoot the ball, grind it out interior, they're good in, down there as well. I, I think Tucker DeVries might be the best player on the court, Ooh. other than Isaiah Wong. Ooh, I'm a Jordan Miller on line one, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not going to shy away from the Charleston pick. I, th I really like the juju that they have going down there, and I think it's going to be really interesting to see how that translates into the NCAA tournament. But I do really like what Dallin said about VCU. And I like what they've, you know, done since Mike Rhodes has really gotten there, right? I mean, he's, he's really gotten that community in Richmond in, involved in that program. They've got eight players averaging over five and a half points. Per game, it's been really impressive. Like you said, Ace Baldwin's great. Jaden Nunn had a great A10 a a tournament yeah. as well. He was yeah. terrific. Um, th they also force turnovers, and, and I really like what they do in transition defense. They, their their defense is their offense. Their offense is their defense. What, one thing to add to this to this discussion, and, and King hit on it. When you're looking at to picking picking upsets, mm -hmm. look at teams that have been there before. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and Sam, you mentioned too with Colgate, like with teams that have been there before have performed. And if they've had success, like yeah. Oral Roberts did two years ago over Ohio State as a 2-15 matchup, yeah. that bodes well. So those type of things that have been in that situation before, mm -hmm. they've won games, they've been in the tournament and have played well, those are things to look at with your 12-13s and even maybe a 14. Perfect. I like that. Uh, let's go to tip number three. That is to ride it out with at least one double-digit seed. So a team seeded 10th mm -hmm. or worse has reached the su Sweet 16 every year in the last 10 years. So Cinderella is good for at least a couple wins in the tournament. So we'll talk a little bit more about Cinderella's later. But uh, do you think that we could see more than one double-digit seed advancing? I, I, yeah, that's a tough question. <laughs> I would say yes, considering, again, the parity that we've seen this mm -hmm. year. And you see what's happened, too, in the last couple of years. We've seen four. Um, I, I, I'm going to continue to talk about Colgate and, and what the Raiders have done for a second because an incredibly talented and experienced team, like you said, Dallin, they've been here a little while. Champions of the Patriot League for the last three seasons. Um, Matt Langall, the, the head coach there, has done a terrific job. Six seniors, four juniors, their experience. They kind of check a lot of the boxes for a big upset. Now, I don't love their first-round matchup. Texas is tough. That's a really yeah. tough first-round matchup. Um, but, but, again, I think this is a team that, that – they have the best three-point field goal uh, percentage in the country. They're shooting over 40%. If you can make threes, you have a chance at least. That's very true. The one I'm looking at is Kent State. Yeah, yeah I like that. Now, now hear, me out. hear me out about Kent State, right? This Kent State team led by Cynthia Carey, one of the best guards in the country, averages 17 points per game, can really step out and shoot the three, great on the defensive side, can also really pass. Now, now hear me out. That first-round matchup against Indiana. Indiana is a team. Trace Jackson Davis is a right. dog down low. They've struggled. We, we know what he's going to bring, but they have been so inconsistent. Jalen Hood, yeah. Shafino, some days, he, some days he shows up, 
Some days he doesn't. Mm -hmm. So if they don't show up that day, they're going to get popped by Kent State. And Kent State is also a team. Lost to Houston early in the year by five. Lost to Gonzaga by seven. So this Kent State team could be dangerous. And if it goes as I, as I planned, Drake will be beating <laughs> Miami. And then Kent State and Drake in the second round. I think Kent State can take that one. So don't sleep on Kent yeah. State at all. I think, well, from a strategy standpoint, if again, if North Shadow Mirror is not healthy for Miami, uh -huh. I, Drake may end up being the favorite in that game. It's only a two-and-a-half point line right now. That's very rare to you see that with a high major team. Oh, that won their conference. That won the ACC <laughs> yeah, as a two-and-a-half point favorite only against Drake. So to your point, you may have a Drake-Kent State matchup. So you it behoove you to pick one of those two teams to make that mm -hmm. Sweet 16 because that seems the most likely that you're going to have. I also would say this to folks. Look at your 10 seeds and your 11 seeds because those are almost all mm. our conference teams that yeah. have had and played big teams, have beaten big teams, have been inconsistent through the year. That's why they're a 10 or 11 seed. But by no means are they scared by their opponent. Mm -hmm. And this is speaking from a former mid-major player standpoint. The biggest difference between me and a guy like the guy to the right of me here, he's, he's two or three inches taller than me. He probably runs faster than me, jumps higher than me. He's physically stronger than me. The God-given stuff is different. Doesn't make him a better player than me necessarily as a mid-major player, but the God-given stuff is different. And sometimes we have to adjust to what you're seeing when the pace of the game is different, especially you've been in a league that's not in that part. That's why Colgate concerns me a little bit from the Patriot League to go to Texas mm -hmm. is a massive delta. When those 10 and 11 seeds, those guys have seen them all before, whether it's Pitt or Mississippi State or USC or Boise State or whatever. This, this is not abnormal for those teams to go see this. Other Does the mentality change, though? Because you'd make a lot of those good points. It seems like with the experience that some of these – mid-major teams have like they are they are going in there saying we like we've been here before we've done this like th does does that mentality change at all 100 percent. i think that they're winning programs and they're winning teams the difference is and we've seen in years past a lot of times they would have experienced guys and maybe they'd be playing some younger younger high major teams the big 12 average age is like 23 right yeah. now yeah. like they got right. a bunch sure, of grown right. men out there yeah, so exactly. like you're not exactly just having old grizzled veterans because part of what the transfer portal has done is allowed some of those better players right. like kevin o'banner to leave oral roberts and go to a high major and you can list other guys that have left to go play for high major teams and not have the same experience or same cohesion with the group that's been around together for two or three years. It doesn't really exist that much anymore. Um, so that, that advantage, I think, has gone a little bit. All right, let's go to tip number four. Pick a seven seed or higher to reach the Elite Eight. So five of the last six tournaments saw a seven seed or higher reach the Elite Eight. Why do you think that those teams stick, along, stick around long enough uh, to reach the regional final? Well, it depends. A lot of times that's inconsistency through the year. Like UNC was the team, they were an eight seed that right. got to the final four. But we all knew the talent they had. When I look around at some of these teams that are seven, eight, nine, uh, there aren't a bunch that jump out to me that seem like, man, they've had a really, you know, they've underperformed through the year. Memphis, because I like their draw, I'm out on Purdue, fully out on Purdue. And fully, you saw, uh, fully out. You, you saw it again at the end of this year, at the end of the game, when you press them and those freshman guards, you guard play is critical in the tournament. It's tripe but true. And those dudes can get sped up and turn it over. And they almost coughed up a 17-point lead with six minutes to go. Yeah. They did it throughout the course of the end of the season. So with Memphis, if Memphis gets past uh, FAU, Florida Atlantic is a very good team as mm -hmm. a nine seed. Yeah. But if Memphis wins that game and they have Purdue, I might pick Memphis to beat Purdue as the first one seed down. Memphis may be playing Duke. That may be your, your recipe to do it. I like where Duke's at. Okay. But Memphis has some older guys, has some grown-up dudes. Mm -hmm. They play at a fast tempo. And Kendrick Davis is a, a top-five guard in the country. Most definitely. And the one that kind of surprised me as an 11 seed is Providence. Yeah. I mean, this good Providence call. team is really, really good. Mm -hmm. they, they have an NBA player in Bryce Hopkins. And Ed Cooley, the one thing, I, I got a chance to do the Providence TCU game. And the one thing that he said before that really stood out to me was, he was like, you know what? I, I want some guys who, who, who are going to go out there and not afraid to go get a charge, a murder charge. And I was like, hey, you, <laughs> you, you, you can't say things like that, Ed Cooley. Especially like, this what? year. I, I was like, wait, Ed Cooley, you can't, you can't say things like that. But what he meant by that was he wants the tough guys that are going to go yeah. grind it out. Yeah. And, and that is his team this year. That's why they're having success, because those guys are tough. They grind, and they go get it out of the mud. And Bryce Hopkins is a legitimate NBA player. Here's my thing with Providence, though. Like, like, how much does the coaching situation fall into this at all? Because, obviously, Ed's name has been brought up a lot. Does, I does, think that's because reporters bring it. Yeah. Ed loves yeah, that job. He may yeah. leave, but, 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 but players read that stuff. Yeah. You yeah. know, not, not any buy into that? I'm not worried about that. I, I would say, if I, were, I would, if I were Ed, I'd walk in and be like, yo, you guys can read this stuff. We ready to hoop? We want to we <laughs> right, win some tournament exactly. games? Like, Fair. that's what I would, Fair I would think, but I don't know. All right, tip number five, don't pick all number ones in your final four. It's not the smartest idea to advance all number ones because an all one seed final four has only happened once in 2008. But the higher seeds do tend to be more favorable at this stage. Dallin, this one's for you. What do you think is the smartest way to choose your final four? 
Uh, if you do it by the math, yeah. and in the last five years, 60% of the teams have been one or two seeds. So the odds are that you're going to have at least one, probably two, one or two seeds in there. And look at their path. I think it's like the two seeds, it is different. And which, if a Texas playing Colgate, I think it's highly unlikely that they lose. But that's the most likely to be challenged. UCLA, too, with UNC Asheville, as I mentioned, injured team, veteran team, they got talent. They will be challenged in the outset. The 16, the one seed, why their path is so much easier if you're compounding odds, the odds that they lose a 16-1 game, it's only happened one time with UMBC. So, um, yeah, I mean, for me, it's that it's it's at least, have at least one, usually two of a one and two seed in, the, in your bracket. Okay, so the final tip number six is pick your champion from a traditional power school, which, I mean, it sounds like very obvious, but when you we talk about parity this season, right? And, like, even when you look at all the teams that have been number one this mm -hmm. year, it seems like those don't – we've talked about how Blue Bloods aren't really running the tables anymore. We talked about the Kentuckys, the Dukes, UNC, obviously. Um, so – I don't love this question, but which traditional power school do you like having the least, the path of least resistance um, in their region? The path of least path resistance? Of least least <laughs> resistance. Now, Gonzaga, does, well, the West is loaded, so that's not, but we, are we including Gonzaga in this conversation now? Because Gonzaga, no. to me, is a blue blood right now. Okay. We've been the I final think, two or five I years. Think, but, I think the Zags can be a blue blood. Let's, let's make them a blue blood. But you want, you want to, who has the easiest path? I gotta, I, go ahead, Sam. i got to say Duke. Uh, I, I mean, you know, sense, yeah. you're looking at what Duke has to deal with. Uh, their first round game against Oral Roberts is tough. But after that, uh, Tennessee without Zakai Ziegler, I don't even know if they win that game. I agreed. Right? Yeah. And then Purdue has struggled. Memphis played incredibly well today. Can they can they replicate that again? Mm -hmm. I don't know. There's been a lot of inconsistencies there. So I, I would I would probably say Duke. I'd have to agree with you on that one. I, I agree 110. percent I mean, I don't believe in Purdue. I kind of like you said. Yeah. I'm not a Purdue guy. I don't uh -huh. think I don't think that it's successful basketball throwing the ball into the, into the paint right. and looking for post ups all game. So I agree with you. I think Duke has the, the least path of resistance. I, I actually I do like uh, Bama's path quite a bit too. When I look down, not just because I have them as my champion. Ooh. Spoiler alert. Um, it's partially because of who they have to play. None of these teams, if they reach San Diego State, that may be a team that slows them down and grinds them. But there aren't many teams in that bracket that's going to make them play in a half-court game and really get physical with them. That's where they Virginia? struggle. West Virginia? I think West Virginia will muck it. I, don't, I said if, if they got to play them. I'm not sure if they get past Maryland. That's the thing. Like the, I, I think fair, West Virginia will fair. make it ultra-physical. Some bruises in that Did game. Did you say yeah. Bama? Alabama? You think that's a traditional power school? Oh, okay. They're, they're like the, a, they're the like number a, one overall seed. Yeah, yeah but so like does a, Texas a team, count then too? Okay, we're no. going blue bloods. Like the like blue. Blo sorry, I, I sorry, well. teacher. I don't do. I didn't listen to the question <laughs> well. Like, Sam, wait a then Sam's answer <laughs> is right. <laughs> Sam's <laughs> answer is accurate. The West Sam's is loaded. The UCLA, the Kansas, <laughs> nah. Okay, yeah. Sam is right. It is Duke is the answer. I'm an idiot. Continue the conversation. <laughs> you can go on about Bama. Uh, now we know who Thanks for Dallin has calling me out, in his bracket. Okay, so right. as we mentioned, obviously the bracket is out now. Download the Tournament Challenge app to fill out your men's bracket right now. Filling out your bracket has never been easier with the ESPN Tournament Challenge app. It's free, so just scan and bam, you're ready to go. The app lets you fill out as many as 25 men's or women's brackets by using one of our simple autofill options that automatically makes picks for you. Still not sure who to pick? Just go with your gut. You can pick your favorite team to win it all or pick a big upset and tap finish my bracket to fill in the rest. It is that easy. Tip off is coming. Download and fill out your brackets now with the ESPN Tournament Challenge app. Well, wow, thanks there, Al Duncan. Okay, so here's the reason that we love March, right? Because of the madness, because of the chaos, because of the Cinderella's, because of the underdogs, just because things can get a little crazy. So we're going to talk about a few bracket busters, a few Cinderella's that might take us throughout March. And Sam, I'm going to let you start us off. So we've talked about it. We mentioned him, Charleston. I really like what um, head coach Pat Kelsey has, has gotten there in buy-in. <laughs> Um, you know, they have the Our City chant. I think that's going to travel. Um, it's just been exciting to watch. At one point, winning 20 uh, games in a row. Um, it's, a, it's a tough – I think this is a sneaky tough one here um, because San Diego State really does have some big bodies, and I think that they may challenge a mid-major like a Charleston who's a little bit smaller. Um, but at the same time, tremendous buy-in from, from this team. This could be a Cinderella. Um. I, what I do like, I was told I got to say Colgate, but I'm, I'm, we're gonna, give, me, give me a minute on the Colgate because we've beaten the heck out of them real quick. Furman, like Furman, this is the same, in the same pod that Sam's talking about right there. Furman beats Virginia, which I like them to beat Virginia. I think they can space them out. Virginia's out. Ben Vanderplas, 
Um, they're going to have to play a traditional big, which I think gets exploited against the Purple Paladins. I like Furman winning that game. And if San Diego State does not beat Charleston, if it's another 12-13 matchup, I think you could have a Furman situation into the Sweet 16 if they play Bama night-night. I don't think you're winning that game. But I need to get to the Sweet 16. We can talk Colgate. I love their team. The problem is the matchup. It's a tough draw. Yeah. It's, yeah. If they didn't have – it's like before we – that's why when we talk about these things in the abstract – Yeah. We knew we liked Colgate. We knew we liked Oral Roberts. Right. I think somebody mentioned Kent State before. But when you actually see who they have to play, right. then you're like, ah, man, I wish they were playing somebody else. I wish yeah. they I wish they were playing UCLA because I would pick Colgate to beat UCLA. I would mm. pick them to, to space them out and be able to make enough shots and not be affected by their stingy defense. That said, against Texas, this team is number one in effective field goal percentage. They shoot the heck out of it. They share it very well. Mm -hmm. But, again, when you're making that jump from Patriot League domination to the Big 12 champ tournament champion, yeah. one of the most physically gifted teams, and, again, teams with guys that are 22, 23, and 24 years old on that roster um, that are deep, I, I just I can't see them beating Texas. I do think that they are a really good team. That's just a tough draw. King, who do you got as a center? Uh, I'm going to keep going over Roberts. I love this team. And and there was a – in 2008, right, Baylor – I'm going to put it together. <laughs> Baylor played – Drop Duke. Baylor really fast. Ba here. Baylor played Duke, uh -huh. right? And, and when Baylor played Duke, it was one call away, a bad charge call away – from Baylor being able to reach the Final Four. And the reason why I say that is because the person on that staff was Paul Mills. Mm. And Paul Mills is now the head coach at Oral Roberts. So Paul Mills has been itching to play Duke again. And, and when you look at his team, Max A. Smith is a high major player, a guy who probably could have went to any school in the country and probably got a bag off the NIL deal, mm -hmm. but chose to stay at Oral Roberts because number one, he's loyal, and number two, my man really wants to be a doctor. He wants Ooh. to be a doctor, so he's smart, just like Dallin to my left. <laughs> also, smarter you, than me. He's when, a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> when you look at Isaac McBride, the transfer from Vanderbilt, that is a high major guard who he is in the backcourt with. And we know in March, guards win games. So when they're able to play off the pick and roll, Max A. Smith, not only can he score, but he can pass. He can find people off the pick and roll. He makes great decisions. Kind of Vanover trans transfer. From Arkansas, I mean, when you the way they shoot the ball, the way they spread it out, they dominated the Summit League this year. I don't know if Duke will be able to guard them on the perimeter, especially off the pick and roll. I'm interested to see. I think they're just going to switch everything and just say we're going to try to keep you in front of you, and we'll contest late. That's and what, that, that, that may be what, that's where the trouble's going to come. Uh, but if they can break the problem is when you have two seven footers in there, I don't Max ain't going to be finishing a ton. And then they, the cleaning up their glass on the other side might be interesting. I just think the matchup is really yeah, yeah. really interesting overall. I think NC State's team we haven't talked about just as another one of those power yeah. teams. I love them to make a run. Again, the matchup with Creighton, I don't love that. But I think NC State could be Creighton. Sorry, my man. It could be Baylor. Or, as you said, it could be, Cal it could be Santa Barbara. <laughs> you beat them, and they could find themselves into an Elite Eight. If they're against Arizona, I mean, Sweet 16, I don't love Arizona's guards. They are not dynamic. They do not score well as they need to. And the guards for NC State are truly dynamic. So if you're looking for an 11 to go to an Elite Eight, that might be my surprise pick. Yeah, and again, I, we, we talked about them too, but, but Drake – um, yeah. You know, just kind of ran their way through the MVC tournament. They beat Bradley by 20, right? And, mm -hmm. you know, they got wins over Louisiana, wins over Mississippi State this year. I, I don't know. I, I just got a little feeling about Drake. I think they could get on a run. You know, a team that we really haven't touched on much is I Iona. Sure. I mean, I mean I I Iona is a really good team. Rick Patino has those guys rolling. But, I mean, this Drake team is phenomenal, though. I mean, like I said, Tucker DeVries is one of the best players in college basketball that doesn't get any love. He will be in the NBA. I mean, he's kind of like a Kyle corver West type of player that can put it on the floor and also make decisions. But I think he'll play in the NBA for sure. Even Roman Penn, point guard, again, the guys that had success. Like, they were two years ago, they were in this tournament, they, had, they battled, and they've, they've been good in this tournament before, and they've had guys that they were 18-0 at one point mm -hmm. two, two seasons ago. And Coach DeVries... Tucker's dad, uh, getting a lot of love, and rightfully so, uh, nationally. So that's that's a legit team. Iona comes back to – I mean, Rick Pitino's done a great job. These guys, he has a lot of high major athletes in terms of the athletes they have on the floor. Talented group. But, man, I think UConn is capable yeah. – UConn's in my Elite Eight, and I, and I struggled to, to maybe move them further. I, I think UConn's so legit. And is, we may, we've started to see the UConn team we saw in the first six weeks of the season – in the, la in the last couple weeks when they were absolutely dominant. So I just I think that's a bad matchup for Iona. Yeah, uh, I, I agree too. But but And, and I want to ask this too, because we're talking about some of the Cinderella's, but what about San Diego State? What about Duke, Miami, and St. Mary's? I mean, th these are all yeah. – uh, is it possible that you could see all of, of those four win? Because what they have done this season. 
and the way Duke's playing, like we've said. That, I mean, you're, uh, they could for sure. I think to, to Christine's point with the stats, it's statistically it's very rarely does that happen. So yeah. it's like almost like this when we're saying, like, maybe play the numbers a little bit. You got to pick one because right. that's going to most likely – the hard part is picking the right Fair one. Enough. Right. Yeah. Uh, at least one. But I think, I think this year in particular, given the injury stuff, given some of the matchup things – I think we could see one or two of those. I actually, I, I think the 12-5 is more solid. I think I like the fives more than I normally do. In this I'm year. with Alan there too. Yeah. And I think ultimately, we talk about brackets. We know that we that there are going. We can pick these first games, these first matchups, and have Cinderellas or whatever upsets, and et cetera. But usually, the teams end up going Elite Eight, um, Sweet 16, Final Four. We know who they're who they're going to be. We're, they're not that big of surprises, mm -hmm. typically, statistically, usually. Uh, but Jay Billis has some really good tips about how to fill out your bracket. Listen to this. Want to fill out your tournament challenge bracket like an expert? We're here to help. First off, don't visit Upset City too early. In men's tournament history, only one 16 seed has ever beaten a one seed, and since 1990, only two Final Fours didn't include a single one seed. Chalk usually rocks. But if you like upsets, then you have to love number 11. At least one 11 seed has reached the Sweet 16 in 10 of the last 12 NCAA tournaments, although none were as lovable as Sister Jean and Loyola. The number 13, however, it's definitely unlucky 13 on the men's side. A 13 seed has never even made the Elite Eight, and all due respect to conference champs, but they're rarely national champs. Believe it or not, six of the last eight titles were won by at-large teams. So to recap, make sure your early upsets go to 11, not 13. And one seed is usually worth more than a conference banner. You got it? Great. Now it's time to fill out your men's and women's brackets. Download the Tournament Challenge app today before it's too late. Yeah, do that. Right now. Uh, so as we mentioned, there's obviously upsets every season, Cinderella's every season, but there's also one seeds and traditional powerhouses that make it to the final four and end up winning the championship. So we're going to make the case for some of the top seeds that are in the tournament right now, starting with the defending national champions, Kansas. The Jayhawks are the number one seed in the West region. We're looking at a team that's top four in the Big 12 in every major team statistic. So King, you've been covering the Big 12 all season. What's not, what is is there not to like about this Kansas team? I mean, this team is really good. And when you look at the team that won last year, they're actually very similar. The only difference is they're not as deep. So when you look at Oche Ochayabaji, that's Jalen Wilson this year. Jalen yeah. Wilson has probably been top three players in college basketball. Mm -hmm. You look at Christian Brown, that's Grady Dick this year. I mean, you still have DeWan Harris. They're also not as long with, my, with McCormick down low. You have K.J. Adams, who sometimes is up and sometimes down. Not really a post-up threat like McCormick was, but a hard roller. But when this team is sharing the ball, they are extremely hard to beat. The problem with yesterday and why they got dominated by Texas was the fact that nobody else contributed outside of Jalen Wilson. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, you will run into that every now and then, but Texas had their number. They beat them in the last game of the regular season, and they were motivated. That team wanted to win that bad. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, when you take Kevin McCullough out the equation, when you force Jalen Wilson to be your only scorer and limit DeWan Harris's paint touches, you can have success against this Kansas team, but I think when they move the ball, build self back, get a Kevin McCuller back, I think this team can be dangerous and go all the way to the Final Four. I think my biggest concern is probably the, de the depth for Kansas and McCullers' health because back spasms is, a, is an issue, and that may linger. So that would be my biggest concern is having that depth. Now, Jalen Wilson has kind of erased some of those questions because he can go out there and do what he does. The problem is, do they have that consistency? Can K.J. Adams be consistent on a regular basis? Um, you know, can there are other role players? Can they make threes? I, that's, yeah. a, that's another question I think I have with Kansas at times. Their consistency and who can they get playing off the bench? Well, I mean, they have the most quadrant wins this year. So they have 17 quadrant wins, which is, in, mm -hmm. which is bananas, uh, how good they were in terms Silly. of beating yeah. big teams. Yeah. Um, but to, to King's point, when DeWan Harris is even being aggressive, he doesn't have to – you want him to score. But even looking at the basket and being aggressive changes their team. When Grady Dick is making shots, it changes their team. McCullers a two-way player, one of the best in the country. It makes them better. When Wilson scored 25 or more, mm -hmm. they're 3-3. Three and three. When, he, when they're not, it's obviously their record is, is much better. They are good when everybody is contributing or more than just Stanley Wilson is contributing. That said, the biggest problem – is their path beyond everything you guys said? Yeah. The West is loaded. It like is. Uh, yeah. Arkansas and Illinois, that ain't a good eight-nine matchup for right. either either one of those teams. Illinois is, 
I, I, they, they are again. This is the big, the Big Ten is Jekyll and Hyde. The whole conference is just up and down all year long. All yeah. year long, it's been yeah. crazy. And Illinois has talent. They got Coleman Hawkins, I think, as a pro. They could play them, or they could play Arkansas with Nick Smith, who's going to be future lottery pick, and other dudes right. that may be up and down. And then you go into maybe a UConn matchup, maybe a Gonzaga matchup, maybe TCU if they get there. Like sure. yeah. the West is absolutely loaded. It's not even close. It's the hardest region. So that's the biggest challenge for Kansas, in my opinion, is it just who they have to play. And I think they got a raw deal. They're the third overall seed. They should be the second overall seed. Right. They should be ahead of there Houston. Is, yes. They should be in the Midwest. They should be going through Kansas City and yeah. playing at home in the Sweet 16 or Elite Eight if they had that opportunity. That is, I don't understand that seating, and the committee chair answered it when they were on the, the, the reveal show. It didn't it, really make any sense. It don't add up. No, it it don't, like it's simple math. Sense. Ten quad yeah. one wins a 17. Right, right. Like it, he was telling me <laughs> the numbers. I'm like, numbers. but these numbers don't make any sense. <laughs> yeah. and it's just, what are we doing here? I do want to ask you quickly because obviously they did say that Bill Self will most likely be at the be able to coach through March and be at the NCAA tournament. But if he's not, how does that impact this Kansas team? Me personally, I don't know if it really impacts him that okay. much. I mean, people have made the case that if they would have had Bill Self yesterday, that they would have won. I don't think so. That okay. Texas team was motivated. Mm -hmm. They're playing really really well. They had no answer for Dylan DeSue. I mean, honestly, I think they missed Kevin McCullough yeah. more than they missed Bill Self. As Coach K used to always say, the players win the games, <laughs> and that's the greatest Great coach job. of all time. So right. without Great McCullough, job. that's a big problem. Yeah. Norm Roberts was, a, was, was in Bill Self's stead. He's a former high major coach. Mm -hmm. He's a very good coach. Remember when Coach Self was suspended for four games early in this year? Roberts was on the bench. Those guys know his voice. They know the deal. Bill Self set the vision and the plan mm -hmm. for the team. I don't think they miss him that much, and yeah. I, I, ideally he'll be back. All right, let's go over to the ACC and the Duke Blue Devils. Number five in the East region, head coach John Shire went 14-6 and six in conference play, including an undefeated record at home this season, which is the first time a first-year coach has ever done that in the ACC. So, Sam, make a case for this Duke Blue Devils team to go on a deep run in the tournament. So Duke was my pick to win the ACC tournament at the start of it um, during countdown to game day. And uh, while this team is relatively young, they rely on their freshmen. We know that. Yeah. Um, at this point in the, in the year, they are no longer freshmen. I would make the argument that they have been there. They've been doing this for too long to be kind of labeled as freshmen. We know what Kyle Filipowski provides, leads all Division I freshmen in double doubles. Um, but at the same time, uh, Jeremy Roach in March last year was a huge reason mm -hmm. why Duke had yeah. so much success. He is seemingly started to make those big shots again, made a couple in the ACC tournament. We know Duke also dealt with some injuries this year. They seem to be back fully healthy. Um, so I, I look for Jeremy Roach to lead this group of young freshmen. If they can get, um, you know, uh, all of these guys involved lively and whatnot, 70 of their 85 points in that semifinal game were scored by freshmen for Duke. So if they, if they can continue to do that, um, th th this team could make a run. And they're set up to do so, as we mentioned earlier. Do you yeah. agree, Dallin? I, I, like their, I like their path, as we said, at the top of their bracket. I do. I love Marquette, man. And I think Tyler Kolick is a name that everybody's going to know by the, yeah. end of this, by the end of this tournament. He was the Big East player of the year. And let's just say, because ESPN doesn't have the rights, we don't tend to talk about them that much <laughs> in the Big East. Uh, and so when we're doing halftimes and stuff, we're talking about everything else we're doing, not yeah, just yeah. the Big East. Uh, and that dude can hoop, man. And people will liken him to Steve Nash and, and different things like that. Yes, because he is Caucasian. But the dude, can, the dude can hoop and is just a very crafty <laughs> player, good with the ball, knocks down key shots. Great, great passer. Like, has tremendous vision. Um, and Marquette's team overall, they shoot it. They play really hard. Shaka Smart is a great coach. And he's, getting the, got, he's gotten there before in terms of getting to a Final Four. I like the path for Marquette. I think they play Duke in the Elite Eight. But I think they beat Duke with yeah. some of their veterans, some veterans and toughness. You know, I, I knew this Marquette team was legit when my Baylor Bears went down there for the Big East Big 12 <laughs> Challenge and got waxed. <laughs> yeah. Waxed. Yeah. Yeah. By, like, 30 on their court. I said, you know what? This team right here... They might be up to something. And Tyler Kolick is legit. Uh, Tyler Kolick pretty much beat UConn by himself in the first half <laughs> yeah, of, the, yeah. of the Big East semifinal. Yeah, right. I mean, it was it was just silly to watch. Um, and if you can do that to a UConn team, by the way, that, that a lot of people are going to pick to go to the Final Four, including myself, um, you know, that's that's impressive. Big East player of the year for a reason. Mm -hmm. I was going to say that. I was looking at your bracket as you were saying a lot of people are going to pick. I was like, you literally picked them. I did. Okay, <laughs> let's go to Purdue. Keep your eyes on your own paper, Christine. <laughs> no cheating. I'm yeah. like, isn't that what you have right there? Okay, let's go to Purdue, the number one seed out of the East region. And this one is pretty easy, right? If you're led by a seven-footer, even though you guys literally hate them, I should call them per don't right now. Uh, <laughs> Zach Eady, who was a friend of the show, who just absolutely dominates on both ends of the floor. It's hard to count this team out, but Dallin, is he enough? No, I will count them out. <laughs> um, he's amazing. He, he's a seven foot four dude. He's an absolute beast, the most dominant guy in the game. But you, it's, you kind of have to double him. The difference is this Purdue team 
doesn't shoot the three as well as last year's team. And man, do they need that. Their guard play is way different. Jaden Ivey's a top five pick for a reason. He was dy- the most dynamic guy in college basketball. You don't have that. Foster Lawyer and Braden Smith, very good players, have had a very good freshman year. But guards win in March, and we keep saying it, and it matters. And they've actually been exposed toward the end of February. Late game, whether it was Northwestern game, up late, they coughed it up. They almost did it today against Penn State, up 17 with six minutes to go. You could press them. You can turn them over. And if you can't get the 7 before guy the ball in key moments, it's tough to use him that well. So, like, Matt Painter's an outstanding coach. Yeah. And they'll figure out, and they, they, they could win some games. I just I, have, I do not believe it were their, their draw that they can get themselves to the Final Four with those guards and the lack of shooting just on the backs of, of, of Zach Eady. Yeah, I mean, when you look at the second-round matchup that they will play, mm-hmm. it's Memphis with Kendrick Davis, and it's FAU with three – ball dominant guards who can all get it off the bounce and create at a high level. I mean this FAU team is they're a really legit mm-hmm. team with great guards who honestly pound for pound might be better than Purdue's guards. So oh, I, I, I don't think, think I think you're I think they yeah. are better yeah, than yeah. Okay, they, they are better than Purdue's guards and that's why FAU has had so much success. So I, I'm not a believer in Purdue at all. I, I think it's more I, it's not so much that I don't believe in Purdue. It's just the draw that they got. I think that also plays really big into this. And it was kind of funny. We, there was a point in the season this year where we started to see Purdue struggle. And we were, we were like, all right, they rely so much on these freshman guards. At that point in the season for high school, you're done. Yeah. Right? And, and, and you guys can speak to this better than, than we can. It's like you run out of steam. You're, you're not necessarily always prepared to play all those 30 games, 35 games that you play in a year. And it just felt like that's exactly what happened to Braden Smith and Fletcher Lawyer. They just kind of ran out of gas. So hopefully they get some rest, but who knows? Yeah, the freshman wall is real. And it's not yeah. just physical, it's yeah. mental too. Like oh, yeah. That mental wall. Um, I will say this too. Purdue does not tend to guard the guard that well either. So that's and then they're just they rely on being a very efficient offensive team to go through Zach Eady, and that's just the only way to get it done. All right, let's go out west to UCLA, the number two seed out west. They came up short at the buzzer in the Pac-12 title game, but Mick Cronin is a solid team behind. Jaime Hawkins, who leads the team in points and rebounds. Uh, King, I'm going to ask you this. What do you like about this Bruins squad that makes it poised for a deep tourney run? I think number one is the fact that they've been there before. They went to the Final Four the year in the bubble. They have Tiger Campbell, who is an elite leader and one of the best leaders. I'm not saying he's a true point guard, but one of the best leaders Mm -hmm. in college basketball. And Jaime Hawkins is a guy who has really carved himself out a role and became the Jaime Hawkins that we thought he would be last year. Mm -hmm. However, I'm not extremely high on UCLA, but I will say that Tiger Campbell, his leadership and his experience gives them a chance. Same with Jaime Hawkins. And Amari Bailey has really started to come on towards the end of the season. But I'm not extremely high on this team at all. I I wasn't big on them prior to the injuries, honestly. I I thought they could get to the Final Four, but to beat the elite teams, because they are are elite defensively, top five in defensive efficiency. They make you feel it. You feel them on every possession. They challenge everything. They had a shot blocker and a dem bone and a rim protector. They were great. And Jalen Clark is the defensive player of the year in the Mm Pac-12. Their defense led to offense is where they struggle. In offense, they can get bogged down and struggle to score enough. That said, Jalen Clark's done with an Achilles injury. Yeah. So you've lost yeah. your best player on defense, your second leading scorer, yeah. and a guy that created offense for you because he got deflections and steals and got you going the other way. You lose your rim protector potentially with a Dembona, did not play an Arizona game. I'm not that big on Arizona with their lack of guards as well. So I, I don't think that's a great comp to say, hey, UCLA played well against Arizona. The Pac-12 is weak overall. They got themselves to a final. Bona's out. If he's out, that team is significantly different. I think they beat UNC Asheville in a tough one. But Boise State... I think Boise State beats Northwestern, but either one of those 7 10 matchup mm-hmm. is going to be very tough for a UCLA team that's wounded. Yeah. All right. Let's go over to Alabama, the SEC champions, the number one overall seed in the entire tournament. They've been at the top of the AP poll consistently all year. The Crimson Tide led the SEC in scoring and rebounds, and they are also led by Brandon Miller. Uh, Dallin, what do you make of this team's tournament outlook? Uh, I do think it has to be said that the Brandon Miller situation, it, they, they did not handle that real well, very well in the beginning of February. February, once it first came out to light, how involved or he was there at the scene of the right. crime. Um, and then they struggled. The next four games, they were terrible in the first half. They mm-hmm. pulled three of the four wins out of the fire. They got waxed by AM in the final game. They went to that SEC tournament and looked refocused. Yeah. They owned yeah. that tournament. Mm-hmm. The thing that's going to come up here, though, when you're in the first and second round, it's primarily the same normal media that's been co- covering you. They're going to be in Tuscaloosa. You know, right. who, who, how many questions are you going to get asked? They controlled yeah. a lot of the, the narrative there. You go to the Sweet 16 Elite Eight, CNN shows up, ABC News shows up. It's a different discussion. Yeah. You go to the Final Four, BBC News, Globo, right. it is an international news story that you are going to have a top five pick. Yeah. 
that may have, that, that whether he's alleged, he's not alleged, he was at the scene of a, of a murder. That's something that's right. going, that was newsworthy when it happened in February, when it became common knowledge across the world right. of sports. And I think if they get to that point in time, those will be asked again. How does that affect the team? How does it affect Brandon? We don't know. Right. But we do know they didn't handle it well at first. They sure look like they've turned the page, but when that's brought up again in that way, I wonder how they go through it when you're playing the other elite teams in the country. Yeah. You know, I have to say that I think Brandon Miller will handle it well. And the reason why I say this is because immediately right after it happened, yeah. he turns around, goes to South yeah. Carolina. They, the, the crowd is chanting, lock him up, right. lock him up. My man dominates. Mm -hmm. 41. He, he, takes, 41 points, the, he yeah. takes the fuel yeah. and literally dominates. And you, he shows everybody why, that he is probably a top – after Scoot and after Victor, he's probably number three pick in the NBA draft. Mm -hmm. He has been dominant. And I have to show some love, Dallin, because you, we, we got into it about Javon Quinterly, <laughs> JQ. He, Dallin didn't like JQ. He's playing a lot better. I, I, I said JQ was legit. <laughs> this phone. kid can play. Who, who said he didn't like JQ? You I said that. You talked about his inconsistencies. He, he was inconsistent. Yeah, he's he's, right, he's, he's right. playing he's better right now. Right. He's been good the last, but he actually bailed them out a couple of those games when they were struggling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He just said, you know what, I'm going to go straight downhill. I think I think that was the the, the it was the a &M, oh, it was the Auburn game when they were at home. Yeah, 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 he just yeah, said, I'm yeah, going to go to yeah. the, the 10 every time and got, got fouled, and that kind of helped turn him around in that game. But yeah. he's been better. But, yes, he's, he was inconsistent. <laughs> I didn't say I didn't like him. It was inconsistent <laughs> throughout the course him. of the year. But he's yeah. better now. Um, but, yeah, I, think, I, think, I, I love Bama's team. I think they're best equipped to win this thing. I have yeah. them winning the thing, as I said already. Yeah. But there's these other th things and how right. they handle it. Also, Brandon Miller, the day after the actual incident, mm -hmm. went to Vanderbilt 36 hours later at 30. I don't know what that means, what that's going on in a young man's head that they rolled him out there and he can compartmentalize like that. Yeah. But I don't know what that means, but that was what he did. Right. On the floor, it's hard to find another team that is not fully equipped when they are fully healthy yeah. um, and like they have been. Betty Ako provides a whole different story. Yeah. It, when he's mm -hmm. playing down low, and he played out of his mind today, yeah. um, really, really caused problems for AM. If he's playing on his game, that, that changes the dynamic of this. When they're making threes, we, we also saw kind of a Jekyll and Hyde situation with Alabama. When they were missing threes in the semifinal game, it was mm -hmm. a lot harder for them to score. When they're making threes right off the gate and Quindle's playing the way that he's been playing, this is, this is a, a formidable opponent in every single game and all the way up to the finals. Mm -hmm. Okay, what? Dallin, uh, you actually have to leave us in a little bit. Okay. So, um, so can you <laughs> give us, Can I take I your jacket know, as a parting What gift? are you even doing? It's so late right <laughs> another, now. Okay. Another show. I yes. don't care. It's uh, fine. Our this show is, is way important. much better, so much better than whatever other show you're going to do. This is not debatable, um, but I can't take my slow butt over there in time. I need to get over there. It's anyways, uh, final four picks? Final four picks. Clearly I said Bama, and Bama to win it all. So that's a little bit of a spoiler. Okay. Uh, Bama coming out of the south. Marquette beating Duke in the east. This one's still hard to I, this may change. But as of right now, it's Gonzaga beating UConn in the West. Okay. Wow. Uh, if Kansas is fully healthy, that's what may change that discussion. We'll see. Gonzaga in the West. Texas coming out of the Midwest. Yeah. Wow. Houston, Marcus Sasser, if he's not 100%, that could be a problem. So I like Texas there. Bama, Texas final. Alabama cuts down the nets in Houston. Wow. So you, even though you know that Alabama is dealing with a lot as they go into March, don't think it's going to impact them in a way that will cause them to not win the championship. I think they are that legit for all the things we said basketball-wise and the fact that they can put this, up, put this to the side. They find a way to do it. But if they didn't, I would not be surprised because that's a lot to handle. Okay, uh, you're leaving, so Please. you're literally going to leave right now. <laughs> no, no. Um, and it's been also, fun. Thanks, wait, DC. where should people? No, actually, I was going to ask where should people watch you. Don't watch. It's after Dallas. this. Is, isn't this okay, nine watch, to ten? What, okay, yeah, yeah. Go on. Ten o'clock on ESPN two. Bracketology <laughs> field at one thirty-six. We're doing the men and the women. We're doing it all. Wow, we love that. Water for bottle you. out too. See you. Bye, Thanks, Dallas. Guys. Right, the best. Uh, by the way, he called the Ivy League championship game today. I mean, <laughs> what, what are you like? Busy this guy's all over the place. Let's go, hype Sam. That's it, Sam. Okay, let's go over to Houston, the number one seed in the. Midwest region. Kevin, Selp, Kevin Sampson's squad ran through the American this season despite being only the fourth highest scoring team during the year. Sam, do you like Houston's path? I don't, I don't like the way they played today. And I think we realize just how important Marcus Sasser is to this team. Be not only because of what he provides as a basketball player, but what he provides as a leader to this team. Met with NBA teams last uh, year. Decided to come back and run it back with the Cougars this year. It was a smart decision. He's going to be probably a top 20 pick. Um, I, I, his health is going to directly correlate to how far Houston is going to go in the NCAA tournament. I don't necessarily think it's going to be too challenging whether they get past Northern Kentucky. They got Iowa or Auburn. 
I, I think they can get past there, but then I, I start to run into some issues with Miami or even Drake in that instance. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, yeah, I, I have more questions than I do answers, and I don't love how much Houston has struggled with the inconsistency on offense this year as well. So Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, Kelvin Sampson, one thing about his teams, I, I have had a chance to play against them, and they walk on the court and try to punk you immediately. And they came to us. Matter of fact, let me tell you a quick yes, story. Yes, I love this. They, I love story it. time. They, they came to our gym, right? We played them in like a, a charity game. We normally have the exhibitions that are closed scrimmages. Well, we had like a charity game. This was my, uh, I want to say my junior year. Uh -huh. They come down. We, and we're like, okay, whatever. Like, they're Houston. Like, you know, we're, we're Baylor, whatever. <laughs> so they, they come in and they punked us. I'm talking about on the glass, offense, rebounds, defensive rebounds. They punked us. They, and then literally, right at the practice, Coach Drew was like, listen, we're not tough enough. We have to go get tougher <laughs> because we are too soft after playing against their teams. I went to go watch them practice. Literally, every single time the ball goes out of bounds, he's not calling it. It is whoever wrestles and fights for the ball gets the ball. I want the toughest player to end up with this basketball. And that is what they're going to do. Wow. So for all the inconsistencies that they have on the offensive side, I think they can combat that by their physicality and their toughness. A lot of teams cannot withstand that. And when you talk about the trio of guards, I mean, Baylor probably has the best trio in the country. Houston is probably a close second. Mm -hmm. With Jamal Sheed, uh, Tremont Mark, and Marcus Sasser, I think that trio of guards yeah. can get it done because guards win games in March. And also, this team is hungry. I mean, what they what happened to them when they played Baylor two years ago in the Final Four, this team wants it. They have been there, and I think this might be the year that they could possibly go all the way and get what they feel like they deserve. Anything to quickly add? To I, a quick, a quick question to you, King. How does this this team this year fare in a Big Twelve? If they were to enter the Ooh, Big Twelve yeah. this year, is Houston still a one seed? No. No. They, but they're probably a two. They're probably a two, okay. maybe a three, but they're not a one seed. They're not okay. a one seed, for we'll sure. We'll find out very soon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at Precision Performance presented by Acura. I love the good alliteration. And we start with the continuation of that alliteration. Purdue center Zach Eady nominated for the Wooden Award. Uh, we've talked about him a little bit today, the seven-footer. What has impressed you the most about his play, King? I mean, the fact that he's so big. And, and honestly, like, it, just how big he is, it, it sounds impressive. crazy, but that, that's really what <laughs> yeah. impresses me. I'm watching these highlights, yeah. like, yeah. this guy is huge. Yeah. He's 7'4", by and, the way, And I guys. think that, that's what makes him so good is the fact that he, it's hard to stop a 7'4", guy. He's already at the rim. Are you at all surprised that he started playing basketball his sophomore year of high school? No. Because, because when you look at it, to be 7'4", okay, now I might get some hate for this or criticism, uh -huh. but to be 7'4", the game really isn't that hard. Now, to be sent for, you're right by the basket. If you can master a right-hand hook, <laughs> if you really work hard and master it, I mean, he's not, like, moving on the perimeter having to work on his handle. He's having to work on his hook shot, his touch around the rim, and if you spend enough time and craft that, I think you can get good, as good as he got, by the time in, yeah. the, in the short King span. sounds like a, a, a hater. I'm not a hater, he but the fact that if I was 7'4", I'd I, do the same I, thing he's doing. I get it. I get it. And, and, and again, I think he deserves a lot of credit, not only for what he does on the floor, but what he does as a leader for mm -hmm. this team, too. Yeah. You know, although, talk about all those freshman guards. He's the one that's kind of keeping them in line. He's, he's, he's answered tough questions this year when this team has lost. So. All right, let's go over to the Big 12. Jalen Wilson, the Big 12 Player of the Year and all Big 12 first team this year, averaging 20 points and eight and a half rebounds per game. What makes him one of the best players in the country? Kate? It's the consistency. So I did three days, the semifinals, I watched the quarterfinals, and I did the championship on radio. And the fact that the mentality that he comes out with every single night, I mean, he's going to go get a bucket. Mm -hmm. There's nothing yeah. that's going to stop him from performing. I think he averaged probably like 22 within the whole span of the tournament. But the fact that he can shoot the ball, he's great when he's comfortable. Heavy right-hand dribbler, but the guy can go get a basket. And last year, we know he struggled with a few off-the-court issues. He came off the bench. He really struggled to find his rhythm with the time that he missed. But mm -hmm. this year, he has answered every single question. This is the Jalen Wilson that we knew he could be. Mm -hmm. He has really literally replaced Ochai Abaji. And yeah. that, that's not an easy thing to do right. because that's a first-round draft pick who won the, the National the Naismith Player of the Year last year. Yeah. That's an elite player. But he has been able to fill in his shoes. And he went to Bill Self the beginning of the year and said, Coach, I, I want to be that. I want to have that role. I want to be this year's Ochai. And Bill Self said, do it. And Jalen Wilson has done it without a shadow of a doubt. 
All right, I want to talk about another guy that we've mentioned already. Houston guard Marcus Sasser. He leads the number one team in the country with 17 and a half points per game. Uh, I'm going to ask you this, Sam, because we've talked about him a little bit. How important is he for the Cougars' chances, chances in the Midwest? Uh, all, he's all important. I mean, I, I don't think you can stress enough. And it was on full display today against Memphis. Now, Memphis was kind of playing out of their mind today. Um, they've been inconsistent all year long. But – I think his leadership on the floor makes this team a, a whole different dynamic. And having him not only be on the offensive side, which I think he has improved on this year, but on the defensive side as well, he's yeah. really improved on an on-ball defensive perspective. Um, you, you just can't have him not on the floor because you're taking what you said, 17 and a half points yeah. out of the game. This team already struggles with offense, and you rely on Jamal Shedd and some of these other players. Like Without him, at 100%, that's another reason why I just I can't yeah. take Houston very far because I don't think he'll be 100%. Yeah, that makes sense. He, he has to be 100% for them to have success, no doubt. But guess what? The last two players we've talked about, guess where they're from? Texas. Dallas, Texas. Yeah. End of the story. Just shut it down right there. We produce Hoopers in Dallas, Texas. Okay. If you didn't know, King McClure from Dallas, <laughs> Texas. Let's go over to Gonzaga and Drew Timmy. Uh, they continue to dominate the West Coast Conference as they get their fourth conference title. I'm going to ask you this, King. How far can Timmy take this team in the tourney? You know, we kind of talked about it earlier. It's hard to really win with a post-up big like in Zach Eady. And I'm going to be consistent. I'm going to keep my logic consistent because I think Gonzaga is in the same boat. Drew Timmy is dominant. That's my yeah. guy because he's from Dallas as well. So that's my he guy is. too. Right? Yeah. That, that's three out of four we talked about okay, from okay, Dallas. Okay, okay. And, and that wasn't planned, people. It just happens to be the best players in the country. <laughs> but Drew Timmy has been dominant, and he's been dominant for his whole career. We know what he's going to bring to the table. You know one-on-one -on -one down low. He is an absolute mismatch. But this Gonzaga's team, their, their guards mm -hmm. just aren't good enough. They're good players, but they aren't good enough to be able to lead them to where they want to go. And normally, I mean, you look at Jalen Suggs, they always have a legit NBA yeah. prospect. Yeah. This is one of their first years where people say Julian Strother might be a, a first-round draft pick or a second round, but they don't have that guy. They don't have that Chet Holmgren, the, the, the shooter. What is, my, what is the shooter's name that was on the team uh, in the championship game against Baylor? Uh, Corey Kispert. Corey Kispert. They oh, yeah. don't have Kispert. a Corey Kispert. So that's three years where you have a legit lottery pick. Mm -hmm. And this year, they just don't have one. So I don't think Rasir Bolton, I don't think Nola Hickman, Noah Hickman are good enough to be able to get them to where they want to go and can create enough baskets off the bounce. All right, let's go over to a guy that Sam has been super <laughs> hot on. I feel like you've already mentioned him a couple times, actually, this show. Tyler Kolick uh, and Marquette. Just what have you seen out of him? You've been really high uh, on yeah, him. Yeah, I don't think it's only me. I, I think a lot of <laughs> a lot of people are really high on what Tyler Kolick has provided to this Marquette team. Simply put, if he's not on this team, Marquette is not the same team. Barely got recruited out of high school. Right. Plays with that chip on his shoulder, and you can see the emotion that he plays with. Averaging 13 points per game. He's second in the entire country in assists per game. Great assist-to-turnover ratio. And like we said, he basically made and handled UConn in the first yeah. half of that Big East semifinal game by himself and just knocked UConn out of it. Um, I give Tyler Kolek a ton of credit at the start of the season during the Big East preseason um, when the polls were kind of coming out. Um, he had some choice words to say because Marquette was picked ninth in the yeah. preseason mm -hmm. polls. They, they won the Big East and the Big East tournament. It was impressive to see, and this is a different team when he's on it. He's just so skilled. And what impresses me the most is when you watch his pick-and-roll reads, so a lot of times point guards, there's a lot of point guards who want to play the point guard position but don't know how to truly make the right read off a of pick and roll. This guy right here, every single time, he is reading his tags. He's locating the open man, locating if the big steps up, he's dropping it to the corner man. He knows how to play the point guard position. And frankly, the only point guard, there's two point guards who I think might be on the same level, Yuri Collins at St. Louis mm. and Marquise Noel at Kansas State. Yeah. But outside of those two guys, I don't know if anybody in America – plays the point guard position better than Tyler Kolick because he's that level of good. And the fact that he's a lefty, I love that. I love he that he's a lefty. lefty. Yeah. It, it just provides some extra swag to his game yeah, that yeah. I really, really love. And by the way, he can score too. He, he I mean, he, he can go get a bucket for you. He's just kind of one of those dual threat players that I think uh, if you don't know the name now, you are going to know the name once the NCAA tournament gets underway. Christine. I also love that he kind of does the hair flip when his hair, <laughs> he has like bangs and he kind of does the Justin Bieber hair flip. We love that for him. Okay, so we've given you like a million and one tips on how to fill out your bracket, what you should do, stats, and what usually happens historically in the bracket. Now we're going to give you our final four for 
uh, this NCAA tournament. And I'm going to start with King on this one, and then give us your final four and then your champion. So my final four, I'm going with Bama out the south, Marquette out the east, Kansas out west, and Texas out in Midwest. Mm. So we have oh, a wow. Big 12 final four. And I'm ultimately going Bama-Kansas championship, Bama winning it all. Brandon Miller is going to show everybody why he is the best player in college basketball. Right. Okay, that's uh, fine. I don't have any any qualms with that. I mean, it's I, not. It, yeah, that makes sense. It, it makes sense. I like it. Sam, what are your uh, what does your final four look like? I'm gonna also go with Bama out of the South. I'm gonna go Duke out of the East as a five seed. I am going to go UConn out of the West as a four seed, and I'm going Texas out of the Midwest as a two seed. Uh, I think, and UConn's been an interesting pick, you know, kind of this year too as well. A lot of people have picked them to, to make a strong run. When this UConn team was playing and how they started um, at 14 and 0, I'm going to have them eventually losing to Texas, and I'm going to have pay, uh, Alabama as. Um, my champion, but but just kind of finishing on UConn, sputtered a little bit at the start of the new year. Huskies are 10 and three in the last 13 games. Their three losses are combined eight points. Computers love <laughs> UConn this year. Ken Palm, Sagarin, all these guys. UConn seventh in adjusted offense, 18th in adjusted defense. Um, Adama Sonogo and Donovan Klingon, who's another seven foot guy, yeah. he's going to be a, a, a freshman to watch in the NCAA tournament this year. I'm high on UConn. I really like what they can do, and their ceiling, I just think, is out of this world. Okay, before I give my final four, how many brackets do you guys fill out? I think you're looking one. at it. I feel one? Like, I feel you like fill one, out one bracket. bracket. Yeah. One, one bracket. a year? One, one bracket a year. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right, here's Why? my Wait, final four. How many four. do you fill out? Don't ask me that question right now. I'm going to give you my final okay. four, and then I'll tell you. <laughs> so I have Bama coming out of the South, as we already know, Bama. Uh, most likely going to dominate the entire NCAA tournament. Okay. I have Purdue coming out of the East only because Zach Eady, friend of the show, I'm going Christine. to say that <laughs> Purdue Christine. or Zach Eady is going to carry <laughs> Purdue. Christine, don't listen to nothing. No, we've been talking. To the How final long have we been talking, Ken? Then, Christine, don't listen to anything go west. I'm not even going to go. I'm not even going to go to the Midwest yet. Okay. Out of the West, I have UCLA. Jaime Hawkes, also a friend of the show. Don't say what I think you about. No this is going to be a shocker. Out of the Midwest, Don't say what that I we have the University of Miami Hurricanes coming out of the Midwest. Do you want to know why? Because in 2012 2013, the University of Miami basketball team won the regular season of the ACC mm -hmm. champ or regular season ACC um, conference, right? Yes. Then they went on to win the ACC tournament. Now, as you heard from our guy Jay Billis, typically, uh, teams that win their conference championship don't win the national championship. Did Miami win the, nat or the ACC tournament this year? They no, did not. They did not. They got crushed. So they have to win a tournament because it hasn't happened yet this year. They won the regular season. They have to win a tournament just like they did in 12-13. And that, in fact, is going to be the NCAA tournament. Any issues with that? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes. So, Isaiah so, Wong. Isaiah, I don't care. No, yes, Christine. Jim Laranega. <laughs> Jimmy's Listen, getting on the court. You know what? You know what, Christine? I, I'm not. I'm not 100 percent mad because that's so, our, that's our modern. This, but I'm mad about the Purdue pick. I'm really bad about the Purdue pick. I know you're mad about the Purdue pick. I'm really I know mad. you're mad about the Purdue pick. If I wasn't gonna pick Purdue, I would have picked Duke. But in my mind, I mean, Duke has been on this tear lately. I feel like they can't keep this up consistently. Mm -hmm. So because of that reason, I was like, I'm gonna just take Purdue out of it. I would have taken Marquette. Otherwise, but yeah, why, that's, why, that's so why not Marquette? Um, I just want Purdue. Okay. Norchad O'Meara, I mean, it, that's Even a though I big, am a huge shock but that's a thing. big loss. I mean, we've been talking about it. 14 and 10. Loss. If they don't have him, Christine, that's a that's a massive problem for your Hurricanes. It's great to be a Miami Hurricanes. Okay, any right last now. thoughts, guys? Any, <laughs> any, any right last now. thoughts, guys? <laughs> Christine, you're delusional. <laughs> you're okay, delusional. as I mentioned, as I've mentioned a couple of times already, go on and take our tips, including specifically my tips. Don't take And them. fill out your bracket. <laughs> Watch Miami win the whole thing now. At ESPN.com just... slash bracket what? Watch Miami just go win the whole thing. That would be amazing. And you know what I would be? A savant. <laughs> I don't know about that. But. Or they right. lose first round. <laughs> Any final thoughts, hey, Christine, guys? As Christine is used to that. She's used to the disappointment. All right. Thank you for watching Bracketology presented by Acura. We'll see you guys next season. We'll see you throughout the March Madness, all of that. These guys will be calling games. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for watching Bracketology Live presented by Acura.
don't know about that Miami pick though. We're gonna, we're, 